Good morning.
loving kindness and for his faithfulness, even in the night hours. He's with us all the time, and our God never slumbers and never sleeps. And one day we will see him face to face. This is the promise that we hold on to as believers. It is the one thing that gives us comfort in this life, especially when we uh, encounter various trials, when we go through those deep waters, when we experience hardship or grief. We have questions in this life, but one day we will know. And the hymn writer of, of, of the hymn that we're about to sing said it like this, farther along, we'll know all about it. Let's sing this hymn together. Tempted and tried, all things Why it should be?
bigger than them to sacrifice so that we can stand here in freedom today it is a very sobering thought and we are truly grateful and we're so thankful to live in this country founded on the principles in the Word of God that we hold in our hands we are a blessed nation we are blessed people because we acknowledge the God of this nation, the God of this world, the God of this universe. And that is why in our hymn book, we find patriotic songs. And one of them is hymn number 493 called America the Beautiful. We're going to sing three of those verses and we'll in include the verse that talks about the heroes who more than self their country loved. Let's honor them today as we sing this song together.
never thought that this is where I'd settle down I thought I'd die an old man back in my hometown They gave me this plot of land Me and some other man For a job well done Used up the road the man inside, he cried the day they brought me home They folded up a flag Told my mom and dad, we're proud of your son and I'm proud to be on this peaceful piece of property I'm on sacred ground and I'm in the best of company I'm thankful for those, thankful for the things I've done I can rest in peace, I'm one of the chosen ones I made it to Arlington I remember Daddy brought me here when I was eight We searched all day to find out where my granddad lay when we finally found that cross He said, son, this is what it costs To keep us free Now here I am A thousand stones away from him He was there to greet me When they brought me in And it gave me a chill When he clicked his heel and saluted me and I'm proud to be in this piece of property I'm on sacred ground and I'm in the best of company and I'm thankful for those thankful for the things I've done I can rest in peace I'm one of the chosen ones Made it to Arlington And every time I hear 21 guns Though they brought another hero home To us Thankful for the things we've done We can rest in peace Cause we are the chosen ones We made it to Arlington Yeah, dust to dust Don't cry for us We made it to Arlington I want to speak to you on this Memorial Day, and, and I won't be uh, taking advantage of your time. I know it's a holiday weekend, and obviously many folk are already celebrating, but uh, you're here by divine appointment, and I pray the message will be a, an encouragement to you. I titled my message, Thank God for Recall Ability, and uh, we do have some PowerPoints to share with you. Isaiah... 43 or 46, 9. Remember the former things of old. I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. Aren't you glad for that? Praise God. God has blessed humanity with some great assets, some great abilities and gifts emotions, desires. One great power that we have at our disposal is our memory. I, know, I knew some people, I've, I've, I didn't know them personally, but I've 
seen them performing that were gifted when it came to memory. They could perform great mental miracles, in my opinion. They would come into a room and they'd walk around. It was a banquet and go to every table and ask people their names. And during their presentation, they would remember everybody's name. Don't expect that out of me, for sure. But really, some people are gifted, and they train their mind and their memory. I can't explain it, but memories come flooding in quicker than microwaves many times. Sometimes memories of the past overwhelm me. I'm sure you feel the same way sometimes. Memories of childhood experiences. You want to talk to me about my first deer hunt when I f shot my first deer? I can tell you everything about it. I can show you on the map where it was. I, it was just a memory that's there. It overwhelms us. Childhood experiences. My first record that we recorded in 1961 when I was just a 19-year-old gospel singer. I remember that. And I probably could sing all of those songs even now. And it was that long ago. But God has given us the privilege of memory. I remember the excitement when I decided to learn how to fly an airplane. I remember my first flight. First uh, with an instructor. I remember seven hours later when he weighed 250 pounds and he got out of the airplane. On the ground, of course, we were. <laughs> and uh, his name was Vernon Blondin. He said, all right, we did a thing around the patch. We called it and landed. And he said, I'm getting out. I said, wait, I'm not ready yet. He said, yes, you are. I am? Yeah. My first solo flight. And when you're flying a little Piper Cherokee and a 250-pound guy gets out of it, everything changes. I mean, I mean... I, I, I just seemed like it jumped off the, off the runway, but I remember my first solo flight. Seven and a half hours of training, and then they trusted me with that airplane. I remember it as if it was yesterday, because memory is a wonderful thing. Childhood experiences, the good and the bad, memory and hope. We can draw from that. We can draw from hope. Hope it can help you overcome in tough times. Imagination can be a great asset. Desire and fear are great assets to believers. But nothing compares to memory. I can recall childhood experiences. I can recall the good and the bad. I can recall the, the times of elation and joy, times of fear and doubt. Life would not be what it is without the ability for recall. Somehow memory has a, a power to file things away with computer accuracy, recall ability. Memory can click on a certain area and bring up an item instantly. I know you know this. To lose memory is worse than losing one of your limbs, an arm or a leg. I talked to somebody this morning, said they went to visit their mom who has dementia and she didn't remember them, didn't remember their name. It's, it's, a, it's just a, a sad thing to lose memory, but we're frail human beings. And uh, we have no assurance that we're going to live uh, without any, any physical hardships. But nothing, in my opinion, now I could be wrong, I don't think anything is ever permanently forgotten. Just because you can't recall it now, it may come back six hours or two days or two weeks from now. It may come to you when you're dying. People remember things on the deadbed. The past keeps coming back. Out of the blue comes a memory that you, you thought you lost years ago. 
Folks who have come close to death, and some of you have for sure, tell us that life flashes in their mind. Christianity emphasizes memory, I think, more than any other religion. Christ, through the Holy Spirit, uses all of our faculties. Hope. What would it be without hope? Right? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. So we have hope. We have fear. Fear is, is real. And fear is healthy sometimes if you fear something that's bad. We have fear. That's another emotion. Joy. Peter called it joy unspeakable and full of glory. You don't know what to do except shout. And being a, a, a public uh, minister for many, many years, many different kinds of meetings, camp meetings, special meetings, testimony meetings, southern churches that get a little more excited than we do up here for some reason or other. I remember, and I've probably shared this here before, singing in a church, and, and I thought, nobody's getting this. I mean, like a mule looking at a new gate. And there was a guy in the front row who looked exactly like that. He just frowned the whole morning. No, it was a Sunday night. And all of a sudden, we were singing a song. I think it was called, It's Different Now. It's different now since Jesus saved my soul. We're singing, and all of a sudden, he stood up. I thought, oh, no. He's mad enough. Now he's going to... Stood there a minute, and then he ran. Went across the front, ran across the back, or that way, two or three times, and he went and sat down with the same look he had before. But I just want to tell you this. We, we have all these expressions and all these emotions and all these blessings, and memory is one of those. Luke 22, verse 19, Jesus said, This do in remembrance of me. He encourages us to remember Calvary. Remember what I'm about to do, he was saying. I believe everything Jesus said is memorable. We were encouraged as children to memorize scriptures. And I thank God for that today. They come back when you need them. They're there. We were, we were not forced, but we were enticed to memorize when we were in Sunday school as I was a kid. And I thank God that we did. Everything Jesus said is worth remembering. He chose his words with, with this in mind, I believe. I thank God for a Sunday school teacher. I mean, she... she and it's uh, enticed us with gifts. If you learn 1 Corinthians 13 by, by heart, I will give you a watch. I thought, oh, a watch? I was eight years old. Oh, my own watch? I'm going to learn that. And we had another kid in the Sunday school that was always, a, always challenged me, always thought he was smarter than me. So we had a race, he and I. There's only about seven kids in that class. And I remember her name was Mrs. Kimber. It was in a storefront church here in Lansdale. And I memorized 1 Corinthians 13 by heart. Still can quote it, the whole chapter. And I won the watch. Johnny Holiday didn't get it. I got it. Because I committed it to memory. Everything that Jesus said is memorable. Praise God for teachers that ins inspired us and challenged us. Unforgettable words, memory verses, they'll come back at the strangest times and the strangest occasions. The Word of God is meant to be like that. It's a rock. It's a sword that has two edges. It's something that you can depend on and it'll come back to you in times of trouble if you commit it inside. If you download it, that's a more modern term. We didn't even know what that meant when I was a kid. But if you download the Word of God 
into your life through your memory. When you need it, it's there. Amen. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. I love this verse. It tells us about a way to escape. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. So don't ever think you're too spiritual to be tempted. All right? It's common to man, but God is faithful. Say that with me. God is faithful. He'll not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it, to defy it. That's a great promise. It's a way to escape. Christian teachers, parents, pastors, keep the word forefront in your home, in your message, in your life. Jesus knew that, me that memory is a power that God uses. So grab onto that truth today. Christ in you is not afraid of the past. You agree with that? He is not afraid of the past. He will not remember them. That's why I like Isaiah 43, 25. It says this. He will not remember your sin against you again. He forgets. Buries it in the sea of God's forgetfulness. The, the ocean is seven miles deep at some places. That's how deep God buries your past when you give it to Him. He's not afraid of your past. Don't recoil when the Spirit says to you, look back. You don't need to be haunted by your past. Isaiah 118, come now. Let's reason together. Let's talk this over. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. That's a promise from the Father. Take that, run with it, and go and sin no more. A relationship with Christ gives you ability and the confidence to look ahead and behind. You wouldn't want to look back if you'd not been pardoned and forgiven. You don't want to look back. But get that, that sin behind you. Only a believer can face the past as confidently as he faces the future. If your past robbed you of freedom and joy, and many it does. If you let memories destroy you because you lose sleep and, or cause you to lose sleep and lose friends, give it up to Jesus. Tell the devil he's a liar. Write a message to the devil on the bottom of your shoe. I mean, sin can take you farther than you want to go. That's a song. Keep you longer than you want to stay and cost you far more than you want to pay. So, Forget it, let God bury it in his sea of forgetfulness and live a victorious life. And call the devil what he is, the father of lies. That might have been me, that was me, but it's not me anymore. Praise God, I'm a, I'm a newborn in Christ Jesus. And the relationship with Jesus gives you that ability. So just a couple points about memory that I want you to remember on this Memorial Day. One, memory consecrates. As years go by, things that were precious become more sacred and more precious. I visited Gettysburg when I was part-timing for parking home and tours when they needed an extra driver. I filled in for my son-in-law Nelson who runs that company because I knew how to drive a bus and had one for years. So if they were desperate, and they were sometimes, uh, they called me to take one of the tours. And I remember going to Gettysburg several times. Took people to tour Gettysburg. A few things have changed in recent years for sure. But the historical sites, the rolling hills, the, where the battles were fought, where P 
pickets charge took place in that open meadow have an air of sacredness about them. There's, there's a quietness. Joe sang beautifully about Arlington Cemetery. I never heard that song, but it was awesome. Man. So how many have been to Gettysburg, the battlefields? All oh, right, yeah. Many of you have. It's, it's worth the trip. 153 years ago, the tide of battle changed several times. And the Confederacy, the ranks were thinning out quickly. And the, the uh, general in charge, Mr. Pickett, made a brave, fatal, suicidal charge. And the Union Blue uh, turned them back. Thousands, thousands of red-blooded young American men died in Gettysburg. Cemetery Ridge, Seminary Ridge. It's consecrated by memory. When you go there, you have a sad feeling. If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. It was the darkest time in America's history when brother fought against brother. 51,112 Americans were killed. 23,000 plus Union soldiers gave their lives just at Gettysburg during the Civil War. And they did all of that to do away with slavery. It's true in our personal lives as well. Bev and I have a, a memory of a small apartment over a garage behind a chicken house. <laughs> That's where we started out. Not much to look at, but full of memories. That's where Becky was born in that little apartment there in Waxhall. And uh, without memory, the Schnabel building where we started, our church would still be a smelly elementary school gym. But I don't see it that way. I see it as a sacred place because of what started there. You touch lives, you share experiences, and that's why from family pictures, are so important. They don't mean as much to those who you show them to as to you and your family. Here's another one. Memories help us to understand our friends. People are understood better after they're gone than they are when they're still here. Remember this thought. Longing to be understood is one of the strongest passions in life. You reflect on that a little bit. When we understand our friends, what they're going through, what they've gone through, what they've been through, it gives us a sympathetic feel for them. Compassion. Compassion opens our hearts. It opens our understanding to those who, while they're still here, we can understand what they're going through. God help us to have compassion. But memory also opens up another person's character when they're gone. My brother Pete left us this week. I have to confess to you, I've been thinking about our lives together. We were the closest two brothers. Had the same interests, pretty much. Pete is known very well at Grandview Speedway for his interest in stock car racing. He was a point, points leader, wasn't he, Jerry? Yeah, won the championship. He, uh, Jerry has put together, did you put on Facebook pictures of Pete in his uh, racing suit? And He was a stock car racer. I was a drag racer. Drag racer straight, you know, I didn't do the oval. But we have both had that interest in, in fast cars and and uh, speed and winning. We had a lot of interest together in hunting. We used to go trapping. And we had a trap line from Waxhall all the way across the hills and valleys and creeks and meadows to Sumney Town and back again. And we'd get up at 4.30 in the wintertime and check our traps. Once in a while we'd get a skunk or a you know, muskrat or whatever, but we, we, we did so many things like that together, and those memories are flooding into me. 
this week since, since Pete passed away. Memory is sacred. It's wonderful. And it's precious. So don't ever put down memories. It opens up a person's character when they're gone. At the grave, prejudices and passions and dislikes and jealousies go. Memory gives us a far better perspective on life. It helps me to be the man that God wants me to be. Micah 6 8. He has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord, what's that next word? Require. Not a suggestion, it's a requirement. What does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and walk humbly with your God? That's what God requires of us as believers. Memory also helps us understand ourselves. The daily fight for self-respect, self-knowledge, self-control. We do things that we regret. We lose our cool, start small storms in the office or in the home. It brings us to our knees. Our memory of past mistakes is a great deterrent. Now in our house we have pictures on the walls, I'm sure every house does, but our hallway is like a picture gallery of our children, our grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We choose what we hang on the walls because we, we look at them every day. So we want to hang pictures that mean something. Memory is like that. It's, it's like a daily inventory check. So be careful when you're making memories. Make them precious. Precious memories. Unseen angels sent from somewhere to my soul. How they linger ever near me as the sacred past unfolds. That's a great song. Make sure you're, you're be, you be careful while you're making memories. Clean, wholesome things. Make your conversation pleasant. Weigh your words. Be, think before you say something. Sometimes we say something and we wish that a second later we hadn't said that. But it's hard to get it back. It's hard to eat that word. So be careful when you're making memories. Make them precious. You'll be glad in the future that you did that. Every day you're living is a, a recording of, your, of memory. Let it grow richer. Young people hope much, but remember later. Little, but later in life, memories sustain us. Memories last way beyond the grave. I say almost every funeral service, memory is a gift of God that death cannot destroy. So I want to talk to you about that on this memorial day. My memory will share in the resurrection. Sure will. 1 Corinthians 13, 12. People have said to me this week, will we know each other in heaven? But we will know as we are known. The apostle said that. 1 Corinthians 13, 12. I will know as I am known. But really, memory makes forgiveness and the grace of God richer now and richer then. When I cast my crowns at his feet, it will be accompanied with memories, multiple memories, motivated by what I could have been and what I was. And I'm going to lay my crowns, if I've gained any, at his feet joyfully. When I remember what Jesus did on my behalf, how can I not be thankful? How much more will I rejoice when I see him face to face. Becky sang at the funeral the other day, Tom Ladner's funeral. I can only imagine what it must be like 
So what kind of memories will I have then? Those who lived carelessly and die lost have eternity and hell to remember. The, the, the illustration that Jesus gave about the man who died and went to hell. And he said, I have seven brothers. Please, give them the message so that they don't end up here. It's in the Word of God. Read it. The memory of rejecting Christ will be the, one of the worst tortures in hell. You'll never forget lost opportunities, wasted years, the rejection of Christ, flashbacks. The assault will never end. That's one of the punishments of hell. Is that the price? Devil, I'm going to get through this. Hear me? If that's a, if, is that the price you would wish to pay for your sin? An eternal memory of rejecting God. I'm happy to inform you today as we come to a close. Do I hear an amen? <laughs> Thank you, Robert. <laughs> amen. I'm happy to inform you today on the authority of the Word of God and my calling as a minister of the gospel, you don't need to finish that way. There's a choice. If you take a trip to Calvary for forgiveness, freedom, it'll flood into your soul like a gusher. All you need to do is open your heart. He said, I'm, you, I'm, I'm knocking at the door Open the door and I will come in. Jesus offered himself for us. It's true. He came as a shield to protect us from the curse of bad memories. There's no other way to please God than to come to God through Jesus Christ. And your life will never be the same. Back to my text scripture. Remember the former things of old. I am God and there is none other. I am God and there is none like me. I'm glad I know him personally. I hope you do. Would you stand with me please for a closing prayer? Once again, Father, I'm, Father, I'm grateful for your faithfulness. I'm grateful for the privilege of breaking the bread of life. Thank you for hiding the messenger behind the message this morning. And I pray that this message will remind us, number one, to be thankful that Christ is not afraid of our past and that you offered the reason with us changes though our sins be like scarlet they'll be as white as snow Lord if there's one near eternity in this service that has not settled it with you for eternity help them before they leave this building to say an eternal yes to Jesus Christ before I close this prayer, if you're here today and you agree with Isaiah and want to reason with him and turn your life over to him, I would love to pray for you. Then here would say, Pastor Jay, I'm not ready to meet God. You reminded me of that on Memorial Day and I would like to leave here knowing that it's well with my soul. It's only a transaction called the prayer of faith a prayer of repentance you slip your hand up and I won't embarrass you I just want to pray for you today. Lord we know you do all things well our times are in your hands 
I pray for this Memorial Day that you'll protect your people, help them enjoy their fellowship and their picnics, their time together. And if there is one here near eternity without Jesus, don't let them pillow their head tonight until they say yes to Jesus. Bless us. Watch over us. Thank you for meeting our needs. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.